Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul, and in this RedGamingTech.com video, we're going to be discussing and analysing tech news which, as usual, has popped up in the past 24 or so hours. And we're going to start things out with a leaked benchmark of the Ryzen 9 3950X. That's right, the 16-core 32-thread monster has been spotted in the wild, and the benchmark that we have is just... Wee. It's just amazing, the result. Of course, Lisa Su did tease the processor during E3's Next Horizon event from the company. It was the last thing that, that she revealed. Um, but there was not really that much information regarding the performance of the processor. They gave some tidbits here and there, particularly of overclocked results that people had achieved on liquid nitrogen and said that it, it was scoring you know, the highest results ever in 16 cores and all of that stuff. But that's great, but it's also using liquid nitrogen and doesn't really tell us how the processor performs its stock, does it? Well, the answer is amazing. Um, it scores incredibly well in single core score, but as you would probably imagine, it is the multi-core, which is probably about the most impressive part. But the other thing I really like about this result is it also shows memory running at over 4,000 megahertz. So, enough talking. Let's have a look at the result. So, this result actually was uploaded today, on June the 12th, and has a single core score of 5,868 points, which is really impressive. Uh, it's actually getting close to what a 9900K, for example, would uh, score at stock. But, you know, whatever you're going to buy a 16-core processor for the multi-thread, right? Correct. 61,072 points for you. Yeah, that's a lot of points. I'll compare it against other CPUs in just a moment, but for now, just bask in the 61,000-point goodness, basically. Uh, the memory is running at over 4,000 megahertz, and is 32 gigabytes in size, and is running apparently on an X470 motherboard, which I'm really happy about. It shows that, assuming you have a fairly competent board, I wouldn't say that this guarantees that you're going to overclock memory really well on your B450 motherboard or what have you, but at least it's a sign that you may have some good luck. It's, of course, uh, recognized as a 16-core 32-thread processor, but the name of the CPU is basically useless with AMD 100, uh, lots of zeros, 3301. And it has a base frequency being detected at 3.29 GHz with a maximum frequency of 4.29 GHz. And the base frequency is also under what you would expect because the base frequency is 3.5 GHz. So also the base frequency is a little lower. So, assuming that this is being detected correctly, uh, there is actually room still left in the tank, which is really amazing. Uh, the cache is exactly what you would expect as well, uh, with the level 1 instruction as well as data cache uh, being listed as 32 kilobytes per core, respectively. The level 2 cache, 512 kilobytes per core, so obviously that's times 16. Level 3 cache is 16 megabytes times 4. But how does it compare against other processors? Well, I'm glad you asked. What about the original Threadripper, the 1950X, which of course was the flagship of the first generation models, running on an X399 Aurorus Gaming 7? By the way, this is not the fastest result. You can find faster ones, but it was just, you know, a, a good median. It was a good average. Uh, so the single core score unsurprisingly gets stomped you're looking at almost, uh, well, actually, yeah, basically 1,800 points difference. But the multi-core score is where probably the story really is for me. 61,000 for the 3950X compared to 39,283. Yeah, so even if you overclock Threadripper, it just is not even going to slightly come close to the 61,000 points of the... Uh, Zen 2 powered behemoth and other processors such as the uh, X299 lineup from Intel don't fare much better well actually that's not quite true they fare better but they can't necessarily win at least in this one benchmark Geekbench uh, the single core score is around 5500 for the 90 
uh, 960X, which is also, of course, a 16-core 32-thread processor. However, the multi-core score is around 56,000, 57,000, depending about overclocking and the rest of the tweaks you have on your system. So once again, even it cannot compete with this 3950X entry. So what do I think of the 3950X? Well, I think it's an amazing CPU, but I would disagree with one point from AMD, and that is I don't consider it the ultimate gaming CPU. I mean, technically, it probably is about the best performing gaming CPU in their stack, but I wouldn't really consider it the best gaming CPU that you can buy from the company because it's $750, and quite frankly, games of the next several years are not going to require 16 cores. I would personally recommend, if you're on any type of budget, that you just plonk your money down for let's say a 3600x or a 3700x now i'm not saying don't buy the 3950x if you've got the money by all means do particularly if you're not just a gamer however i would say that this cpu is not really just going to be aimed at people who are gaming um but for multitasking it's going to be really interesting to see exactly what it's capable of obviously you only have two memory channels which may not be a big deal with the changes to the caching system. And also with fast enough memory, perhaps it just makes up the deficit. With that said though, I'd love to see what happens if you're doing some video encoding, while also maybe doing some 3D rendering with like 3DS Max, while possibly doing something else simultaneously. What happens? What are the limits? What happens in terms of latency? Does it start getting impacted if you're doing, let's say, something in the background, like maybe uh i don't know like rendering an image while also maybe trying to play some counter strike what happens there these are all things that we just don't really have answers to at the moment but it's going to be fascinating to do some testing on now i want to shift focus to nvidia who have actually given a response to amd in regards to some of the stuff that they announced during e3 so there were a couple of things that AMD did disclose during the next Horizon event, such as that anti-lag technology, but I didn't actually cover it yesterday's video. Now, the reason behind this is because at the moment, we have no precious little about the underlying technologies that AMD have used to reduce the latency. So there wasn't really that much I could say, other than according to their own figures, their internal figures, we see a reduction in input latency of about 30%. But let's have a look at NVIDIA's response, and then I'll give my two cents on this. This response is from Tony Tomasi, who is the VP of Technical Marketing over in NVIDIA. So AMD introduced a couple of things we read and heard about. Radeon image sharpening and fidelity effects. So we, of course, have similar techniques. And for some time, Freestyle, about a year and a half ago, it has a large number of filters, which does include things like image sharpening and color correction. So if people do find sharpening by itself particularly cool and valuable, then yeah, we can kind of invest in that. But we have that kind of functionality in Freestyle with a bunch of other post-processing effects. And it's been developed for some time now. The other thing they talked about was the Radeon anti-lag. And I haven't got a particularly good explanation about what's going on with its CPU and GPU load balancing to reduce the latency. That can mean a lot of things, to be honest. But we have some stuff for reducing latency, lag, whatever you want to call it, for some time. And if you look at our control panel, it's been there for over half, so for more than a decade. Not calling AMD's technologies bad here, but I do somewhat lean towards what NVIDIA have said. Honestly, I want to see these technologies more in action and to try them out myself. The demos looked kind of cool from what we saw, and obviously the fact that there is basically no... Um, impacting performance is great and all that, so that's amazing, but I am still on the fence with the technologists themselves, despite the fact that I do have some hope with the RDNA architecture. I think it looks really promising. And now let's move over to NVIDIA's Super, because we know that something is coming. The company teased it before Computex. Computex went and e 3 is now gone, and still, we're yet to hear anything from the company regarding Super and exactly what it is. We've heard everything from it's going to be just maybe something like RTX 2070 Ti, all the way to an entirely refreshed 
range of graphics cards. I've personally been told that we can possibly expect cards to support faster memory, 16 GPPS, rather than the 14 GPPS we've got now, but there has been a couple of updates. So the website videocards.com I was speaking with today, as well as they've got an article up, and according to their sources, they've seen the cards. They know they exist, but they're not certain what the specifications of the lineup are. They do know, though, that they are a real thing. They're just uncertain exactly what the differences are. So we don't know if inside that GPU it's going to have a little mini robot that comes out and makes you a cup of coffee in the morning, or whether it's going to be largely the same, only with some slight clock frequency differences, or whether there are going to be a number of compute unit changes. But there is an article floating around the internet from the website WCCF Tech, and they claim that, according to their sources anyway, the super cards are going to be radically more powerful than their predecessors. So let's quickly go through the article. I'll, of course, link it in the description of this video. So the announcement for this is supposedly aimed for 21.6 or 6.21, depending if you're British or American. Uh, but, of course, this could possibly change. Uh, the RTX 2080 Ti Super... Jeez, this name is going to be so terrible. Anyway, um, from what uh, they've been told, it is not a repo repurposed excuse me, Quadro part. It will be totally unlocked, which means you can have up to 300 watts TDP. You can imagine what that's going to do in terms of clock frequencies and so on. We don't know what the specifications is going to be yet. What we do know is it's going to be much, much faster than the existing RTX 2080 Ti's that we all know and love, and it's going to be at a roughly similar price point. The cards, though, that to me are possibly more interesting would be the RTX Super, because this card has 11 gigabytes of memory and is going to have a, quote, unlocked RTX 2080 Ti chip. It will have more cores than the vanilla 2080, but fewer cores than the Ti. They do know, though, that 11 gigabytes of memory is still going to be there. Furthermore, there is going to be the RTX 2070 Ti Super. They don't know anything about this card other than it does have 8 gigabytes of memory and the launch is possibly delayed. Then there is the RTX 2070 Super. It will have an unlocked 2080 chip, so the 2080, basically, is going to be found in the 2070 Super. It's going to have a core count between the 2080 and 2070 and we can assume there will be other changes as well possibly faster memory the rtx 2060 super will have eight gigabytes of memory and will feature the core of an rtx 2070 but with the core count between the 2060 and 2070 so to clarify what that actually means when i say that the core of a 2070 but with the shaders of between 2060 and 2070, it basically means they're taking the 2070 chips, but obviously when you're producing silicon certain times, you have defective uh, bits of that silicon. So for example, a number of CUDA cores may be, um, may be defective. So they're just gonna repurpose those for the 2060. And as for the existing 2000, uh, the RTX uh, series of chips, well, most likely they're going to remain for now, and then they're going to slowly focus on selling the unlocked parts. So, my thoughts on this are very simple. If this is true, NVIDIA are going to just breathe new life into their lineup of the 20 series. It's going to be very fu uh, frustrating, though, for owners who have just recently purchased, let's say, an RTX 2070 card, and it's going to be really interesting to see what happens in terms of the retail space, in terms of the shuffling of prices. So basically, it may also force AMD to rethink their pricing strategy of cards such as the 5700 XT. Also, we don't have an answer from AMD right now with cards such as the 1660 series, 1660 Ti, 1660. So... Will we see AMD designed to launch lower-end uh, RDNA parts as well? It's a question we can only wait and see. I'm guessing yes is the answer. But will NVIDIA launch Super? I'm guessing yes. Are the specs going to be as impressive as this? Who knows? 
I suspect that they won't want to lose the performance crown to AMD. I suspect that they will, at the very least, I think the minimum we're going to see from NVIDIA, and I do mean the bare minimum, is a price cut of their current lineup of cards in the short term. I don't think, though, that they're going to want uh, to lose the performance crown of the RTX 2070. That's my personal opinion. I may be wrong, but I think that they're going to want to do things to try and keep that uh, and clutch onto it as tightly as possible. So if they can do that, obviously this may be great for us because possibly RDNA may ship a little bit cheaper and it might might cause some corrections in terms of the market for pricing. We can only wait and see though. With all of that said, let me know your thoughts and opinions and I'm going to get going. So thanks very much for watching the video and all of the support. It is very appreciated. You could find us on social medias, which is right down there. You can find it right there. And uh, you can also find us on Patreon if you want to donate. That's totally up to you, of course, as well as some Amazon affiliate links. So if you need to buy, I don't know, I was going to say a lawnmower, but I've used that example several times. Let's say, I don't know, a, a new bottle opener. Uh, then by all means, if you use that, that would be, you know, give us a few pennies and doesn't cost you anything more. But take care of yourselves. Bye for now.